How's it going, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of our van build. And yeah, today's gonna be fun. We are finally doing our first cosmetic related thing to the van. We're installing vinyl plank flooring in our Ford Transit. It's gonna be awesome. Check it out. It's here behind us. Yeah, so we are going to be installing what's called loose lay vinyl plank. So this isn't your traditional vinyl plank flooring that has the tongue and groove that kind of clicks together as you build it. This literally is just sitting flush with each other and there's these like beveled edges so they, they just sit nice and perfect. And yeah, we're gonna be gluing them to the floor of the van just so they have something to keep them in place. But this will be cool. We picked out this color like a few weeks ago. And yeah, we're just really excited to finally do something, like we said, cosmetic to the van. Sort of it start to take shape of what part of its final look will be. <laughs> this will be cool. So join us for that. We're gonna get into it. Hopefully it's not super hard to install just from what we've learned online. Loose lay vinyl plank is pretty easy. You just kind of put it in place. Smush you glue, them you squish them together. You glue it down. Make sure everything is nice and straight. You don't even need a hammer or anything. So no. one, yeah. one thing that uh, we were a little bit concerned about with this type of flooring is how waterproof is it? Yeah. But somebody actually on YouTube explained it in a very like understandable way that when you smush your two fingers together, <laughs> nothing can get through that. Yeah. So it's basically the same idea. We're yeah. smushing them together and nothing should get through that. <laughs> so in terms of flooring for vans, there's obviously lots and lots of different options. People install all different types of floors into their van from you know laminate flooring to vinyl sheets and here we go with the vinyl plank and vinyl plank is definitely one of the more expensive ones we had to buy like five boxes of this stuff and it was like four hundred dollars so imagine you were doing like an entire 1000 square foot space kind of thing right so this is like 80 square feet <laughs> another thing about vinyl plank floor is that while it is 100 percent waterproof and that'll be awesome it is also pretty heavy so take that into consideration if you're wanting to install something like this in your van because yeah you got to really make sure you're going to keep everything under the weight limit this stuff gets heavy so just keep that in mind but join us today as we jump into the install of this floor we've kind of just prepped everything out and it's ready to go so we're just going to figure out how we're going to line everything mm -hmm. up first yeah, before yeah because <laughs> yeah because you know well the first line that you make dictates the rest of how it's going to go and we don't want to finish this process <laughs> and have it be crooked or something so let's do it so yeah, this floor that we got was from a local flooring company. The color is called Paris Oak, I think. So we're going for this lighter tone and it just, it feels so nice and solid and just well built and good quality. So really excited to get this down. Let's get into it. All right, so first thing we're doing is just kind of laying it out just to see how many planks we need width wise. Obviously they're gonna be staggered. It won't look like this, but you can't even really tell from far away. Like I can't even really see the seams or anything. <laughs> so yeah, something roughly like that. So we'll have pretty much full boards every single one until we get to here. And I have to shave a little bit off of this one, but I think that should look pretty good. Yeah, so our plan for starting <laughs> is we're gonna start with, I guess, this row. Yeah, so we'll do the first all row. The way. Yeah, all the way to the back. So and we'll glue that one down. So that yeah. one is basically, so how these work is they kind of originally needed to be like butted up against like a wall. Uh, but if you don't have like your traditional wall, then you have to glue it down and gluing it down is also just recommended in general. Um, so yeah, we'll have at least the first row glued down and smushed together. And then I don't know if we're deciding yet on whether we're going to glue the whole entire thing down or, or if we're just going to glue sections because you are able to do that, like just glue like the outer edges. Yeah. And but yeah, yeah, maybe once we get deep into it, we'll see. Cause yeah, if we don't have to glue like the entire thing, it makes it a little easier down the line in case, you know, something happens and you need to replace one. But also maybe in a van setting, it is a good idea to glue them all down. So they'll just not go anywhere. So. Not really sure what we're gonna do quite yet, but. Go start somewhere. We're gonna yeah. start with row one. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so we are preparing our first row. And because these planks are actually like almost the exact length of our like subfloor sections, we're offsetting this one a little bit further back and we're gonna cut off that yeah. little section. Because I'd rather the seams of where these are not match these seams exactly just because like the level of 
this part of the floor and this part of the floor is not exact. So I don't want to have to like feel that transition if I'm walking on top. So we're going to overlap them and offset them like Dana said, but we're just trying to get a good uh, level with this first one just because, you know, nothing in a van is square, right? So I'm at least going to use what I can find and kind of make this 90 degree a good start for us. Okay, so we are trying to figure out what we are going to use as our square piece in the van because, well, once you lay the floor down and if it looks crooked, it looks crooked. And um, we'd like for it to not look very crooked. So yeah, let's, uh, let's see what Mike's come up with. But looking at it right now, this looks sorta straight. Yeah. Okay, we are going to try to do it like the pro. And the pro, all he did was he sliced it with the uh, the knife, and then he literally just broke it. And he said it just breaks. Yeah. Oh, I see. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so we have our first line pretty much all lined up and ready to go. Okay, it so looks... Yeah, we need to cut this one. We'll take a pencil and mark underneath that curve and then we'll have to cut it. I think this is a good start. Everything looks pretty great. Okay, we just drew this curved line for this cut. This will be the piece that goes right here. This is all lined up, cut on both ends. We are good to go. Now we're gonna start laying down some glue. All right, so to adhesive our floor, to our subfloor, we're using something called Robert 6300. Uh, yeah, it was recommended by the flooring people who sold it to us, so hopefully it should work pretty good for this. Um, there's a couple of ways you could use this adhesive. If you spread it around and before it dries, you put it on the floor, that's what's called a permanent insulation, and you're not, you're gonna have a lot harder time Kind of ripping it back up in any event that you need to do that so we're not going that way what we're gonna do is spread the glue down and let it get tacky which takes about like anywhere from half an hour to 45 minutes after you put it down and you'll put your floor down it'll still stick to it and hold it in place but it won't be such a permanent stick that if something happens down the line and you need to redo that section of flooring, you should just be able to rip that piece of flooring up and put a new one in and yeah so we're gonna get going on that Hopefully this goes okay. Never used any product like this before. So we got this and we got the little trowel tool to kind of spread it. So let's give it a go. Alrighty, the first line of glue is already down. We now have to wait 45 minutes-ish to allow it to get tacky like Mike was explaining earlier. And then we can lay down the first row and officially start putting down the floor. Alrighty, it has been about an hour because, um, you know, it's cold outside here still and the 45 minutes, I don't know, didn't seem like it was quite long enough. So we went for a full hour and we are now going to start laying the floor, officially. decent job and the first piece of flooring is in and it's glued down and it's gonna be you know a good base for the rest of the floor alrighty everybody so that concludes day one of this build I think um, yeah we got pretty much most of the center section all cut and laid out. None of it's glued yet, but I think we have decided that we're gonna glue pretty much the whole thing down. But just cause it'll make the seams all sit just way nicer and way more clean and flush. I think it'll be very time consuming, but yeah. everything in this van build is time yeah. consuming, <laughs> but yeah. So far we're loving this though. This looks awesome. Yeah. We're really happy with this color and this floor just feels super quality. And yeah, you get what you pay for. This stuff was expensive, but it's great. But we'll catch you guys tomorrow for more of this build. Hello, welcome to the next morning. So up bright and early, at least it's not raining, but it's starting to get cold again. 
Um, we're gonna start getting going with all like these end pieces on the side that require special cuts and stuff like that. Not so fun cuts. Uh, yeah, yeah. These are <laughs> where it's gonna start slowing down. It's gonna take a while, but gotten one done so far. Gotten this little piece cut right here, and it just goes right here. Oh, no, that's not it. <laughs> like this. There. <laughs> so that fits nice and snug right there. So now we're gonna get going on all the rest of these pieces. <laughs> And yeah, hopefully we can finish today. Okay, so now this is where we can start using some of our off cuts to kind of fill in some gaps. This, is, gonna be, this is all gonna be behind stuff anyway, so you're not really gonna see any of it. Well, and then so. we're not gonna do this corner just cause we're boxing this thing in anyways, yeah. and we'll put some insulation and whatnot, but like it'll be boxed in, so you're not gonna see those corners. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so now we're gonna finish off the entry step area here with this board. Good job. Cool. Okay, we're in the middle of cutting all the really wonky cuts. And the one that we're doing right now is quite important because we're probably gonna see it like all the time because this little section is going to be open uh, for Mike's office. And yeah, I'll quickly turn the camera around so you can kind of see what we're working with. So this is the corner. There's like a bunch of little notches. Yeah, we're trying to make a floor fit around here perfectly, but we're gonna see all of this section. So like it has to fit around this and this very nicely. Yeah. <laughs> So that's gonna be interesting and hopefully we get that right. Okay, so after much measuring, I think this is what we're gonna go with. <laughs> Let's see how well this works out. Wow. What? That worked out awesome. <laughs> Do you still have to shave it though? I don't think so. No? Okay. Okay, so we are done cutting and laying out all of the floor now, as you can see, it looks magnificent. We love it so much. All in all, we are super happy with how this floor looks. It is beautiful. We love how it turned out. I'm pretty happy with my work around like these sort of weird edges. And yeah, all in all, I think these are great. What do you think, puppies? You have no opinion. <laughs> this is a little hint as to what we're doing. Oh yeah, next. yeah. So next. <laughs> so yeah, our next big project is going to be adding some more windows into our van build. Um, I know a few of you in the comments were asking like, hey, are you gonna be putting any like windows that open? <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Welcome to another day. So as you saw yesterday, we were working on the flooring and we finished, you know, a good portion of it. But today we have decided to move on to framing out these bump outs here. And yeah, we just kind of put down some protection for the floor for the time being. And yeah, let's frame out some windows, which are not here yet, but uh, we're thinking this weekend we might Put in the windows uh, we're starting to get to the point now where anything that we add now is kind of means we're committing to stuff so yeah. like we're committing to the placement of this window framing and like sort of the bump out for where the bed's gonna sit and stuff like that so it's uh it's a little scarier now getting to these stages yeah <laughs> all right so this i think is going to be the bottom of the frame for our window bump out just because we're trying to make it uh these to be regular countertop height. So this is 36 inches from the floor because on this side is where our kitchen cabinets are gonna come all the way to the back, right? So- We kinda wanna mimic it so it's the same. Yeah, yeah, so like the window bump house look the same. So we kinda set this top height at around 36 inches and we're just making sure it's level because everything that we build now does have to be level and square with the van. A lot of this stuff doesn't matter because it was all gonna be covered, but now this is gonna, dictate the shape and size and levelness of our window bump out so it's uh very important <sighs> today we're actually finalizing 
where we're gonna install them. We're gonna cut a hole into the van again and do all that. So a few months back, you saw us install like these windows and the one on the slider door over there. But these ones are definitely a little bit different. These are ones that actually open and like kind of like hinges open and it has the bug screen and the blackout shade like we told you guys. Uh, they gave us a really handy like frame and template cutout to line up where we're gonna go. So we've already marked a center point of where our windows are gonna sit in relation to this kind of box frame that we're building. So yeah, we've got the template all ready to go. We've got it all lined up. I made a mark on the wall where our center line is. So we're gonna start drilling now. We're gonna get into it. Always scary cutting into this side of your van, but at least this is not our first time. So <laughs> not that scary. <laughs> I think it's so scary <laughs> now that we're doing it. Oh. No going back now. I can <laughs> see the light. <laughs> Okay, so on the outside, I've just kind of taped a square of painter's tape and I'm gonna use the template and just match it up with the hole that we made and just make sure, you know, alignment wise, it's all good. I'll kind of measure from this line here to the top of the window, just to make sure everything is level, but yeah, it should be pretty easy. I'm just gonna take the drill bit that I used to make this hole to kind of hold the template in place. Okay, here we go. Hi. Oh my God. <laughs> Why is this so scary all the time? All right, the next step yeah. is to test fit it. <laughs> And we may or may not get this right the first go, but that's why we bought a new tool that would help us. Oh my God. That's pretty good. Well, it already fits pretty good. <laughs> yeah, but uh, we need... But the, yeah, the thing about this type of window that's different from those is that this is actually sitting in the hole. And the manufacturer says you need a little bit of play within the hole. Um, so right now I think it's a little bit too tight. So we have to kind of shave off the edges, but I mean, this is just an idea of what it'll look like. I like it. Yeah. All right, so this is what it looks like on the inside so far. So before we get any farther into this install, we actually need to remove the rest of these kind of rib braces. Well, the whole so, thing, like we just can cut a little Yeah, bit. we just need to cut enough so the window can fit in place. So we're gonna get all those out of the way and I'll probably use like a multi-tool to cut through these. So yeah, we'll give that a go. Okay, so what I've done here is I just cut a little piece off of the metal that I just cut to provide as a backing behind these uh, rib supports. And I'm just gonna take a multi-tool and very, very carefully just cut out these ribs. Six. <laughs> All right, so we've gotten rid of the ribs, got the window just test fitted back in place. And yeah, so the manufacturer says you need to have a tiny gap around the outside of the window so it doesn't sit like super tight against the van wall because that apparently might make the metal like wrinkle and buckle. Um, so I think we're generally pretty good with the alignment of it all. I think I might want to trim a tiny bit at the bottom here where it's feeling just a tiny little bit too tight. But honestly, for the most part, I think we have it pretty good. Turns out that the, what is it called? The Dremel? The rotary tool. The rotary tool Ooh. has no battery. So <laughs> while we are waiting, um, I guess we're gonna start on the second window because I don't know, this is going a lot faster than the uh, other three windows. So wish us luck that we get them somewhat even and you know, exact. <coughs> Then 
there were two holes. Okay, so we've just taken the rotary tool with this like grinding stone and just cleaned up some of the edges where the window was just sitting a little bit too tight. Um, probably wasn't the best tool <laughs> to use for this. Uh, I think a better tool is something called a die grinder, but that involves having like a big tank of like compressed air and stuff like that. So this was nice and cheap. It works fine. It just, it takes a little bit and maybe I should have gotten the corded one because the single battery, I don't know how long it's gonna last. But anyway, it works. We're gonna bring back this window now and test fit it, but I think we're pretty close on this one. All right, so got the window back here and just double checking that it's even on top everywhere. Okay, now that we have the hole all cleaned up, we're gonna paint the outer edge with some automotive primer, anti-rust paint, get it all ready for the final install. We finished painting the edge of the window. Now we're gonna take some Sikaflex 221, put a tiny bead around the entire outside of the window, and then we'll put our window on. So here we go. Okay, so we finished putting the Sikaflex on the outside, and then I'll put a ring of it on the inside edge here as well. And then now I'm doing the last bead of it on this wooden framing ring that they give us. Okay, here we go. Okay, now that we got the wood frame in place, we gotta put in these little clips that kind of hold it down so the window stays cinched all the time. We have finished cinching in this window. We still have to put on the whole like inner frame here that has the bug screen and the blackout screen. But yeah, I think this worked out pretty well. Here's a little show and tell of the window opening. So there you go, works great. Uh, the hinges or these little strut things need a little bit of lube. They're a little, uh, they're a little loud right now. <laughs> but we'll deal with that in a little bit. We'll water test it obviously once it's dry so hopefully that all worked out but before it gets dark we're gonna hurry and finish this other window because we still got one to do and it's been all day now so we gotta we gotta finish well both windows are installed and we are now going to put the fascia on yes. <laughs> yeah so it kind of just pops into place there and covers up all of our terrible work that we did. It's not terrible, it's just the glue was kind of a pain in the behind. Yeah. Well, we have one window. So we got bug screen, blackout shade, and then you can have it. Oh, oh we gotta take the plastic off this. <laughs> yeah, hold on. So I'm gonna do the other side. The satisfying Peel. Woo! So pretty. Looks good. <gasps> wow. We can see. Holy cow, that looks so good. Wow. Okay, everyone, so we have finished both windows. As you can see, we got both frames all in and everything works amazing. We got the blackout, we got the bug screen, they all open. This is awesome. These look great. Yeah. Um, I love that they're double pane acrylic windows. They should provide a little bit, you know, more insulation and sound deadening than just a regular single pane window. Really happy with how these turned out. It wasn't too, too hard to install, especially since we had experience from the previous windows. So that helped a lot. Uh, but yeah, guys, that's it for today. We're going to call it for now and join us as we continue our van build whenever we get to it next. Mm -hmm. <laughs>